Well, it was a long weekend and I was putting in some more volume playing 500 no limit on ignition poker. And I got another really good session over where I made some interesting plays that worked out, fortunately for my sake. But I'm also going to be giving you guys five tips to help you dominate when you are playing on here, especially at the six max cash games. Of course, as I'm getting into this, I'd also like to point out that Ignition is currently one of the main poker sites I've been playing on now for many years, so I would recommend you guys check them out as well. So there will be some bonus and resource links you can check out directly below in the description. You could also get on our premium poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on hand analysis and tips to help you make more money at the tables. Don't forget to tap that like and let's get in these tips. Also, stick around to the end because we got close to a double up in this one on some really interesting hands. But, all right, so the first uh, tip here is that you got to be aggressive when you're playing hands against one opponent. Now, if you're in a multi-way pot with like two or three people, um, I'm sorry, two, three, or four people, it could be different. But if you're just one-on-one -on -one against somebody, you really want to be aggressive almost all the time. You got to understand that... You know, even if a flop, you miss a flop and you've got, yeah, I don't know, whatever it could be, like uh, an ace-king or an ace-queen or a 9-10 suited, you know, there's a good chance that your opponent also missed the flop. So just continuing with your bet is going to be enough to take down the, the hand most of the time. Second, don't be afraid to 3-bet to late position raisers. Now, this is something you got to pay attention to, but... You know, if everybody's folding around like the first few people to act are folding and then you get around to, uh, you know, the later positions and someone's putting in a raise, they likely don't have a very strong hand. OK, so what you want to do is three bet with, you know, your jack nine suiteds, your jack tens and obviously all your premium type of hands, you know, your ace kings, ace queens, your pocket pairs, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, you definitely want a three bet to late position raisers because a lot of the time they're just going to fold anyways. And if they call, you, you still could flop something massive, even if your hand isn't the strongest, you know. So like I said, even with those like jack nine suiteds or those eight nine suiteds, those type of hands. All right. Third, if you know you're beat sometimes, bluffing, you know, isn't always the best play. You know, honestly, you know, bluffing is a bit of an art, but you got to understand that if somebody, you know, might have hit the flop really good and you realize that sometimes it's best to just, you know, check it over and just fold. OK, it depends on the situation. But if you realize at some point in the hand that you're probably not going to get your bluff through, then maybe just check fold it. But on the flip side, if you're going to bluff, don't check the turn, guys. This is the biggest giveaway I've ever seen, all right? So, you know, if you're, you know, bluffing at somebody and you and you get scared on the turn and you check, that's just a dead giveaway that you don't have a very strong hand. And even if your opponent doesn't have the strongest hand, they're still going to pounce on you. So, you know, if you're going to do a bluff, don't check on the turn is what I'm saying. And fifth, Review each of your sessions on the hand replayer here. It's free and easy to use, guys. You know, you'd be amazed that just watching your sessions and just seeing how you played, you know, over and over again, you're going to start to see the leaks that could be in your game and things that you could probably improve upon. And honestly, it's it's really that simple. But anyways, um, all right, here we go. This hand was kind of fun. Check this one out. This hand was actually pretty sick. And, uh, you know, obviously this is going to be a bluff, you know, <laughs> just a complete bluff right here. But it ended up working out for us. Okay, so uh, clearly not a good flop. I mean, we need runner runner cards for really anything here. You know, maybe uh, like a 10 of hearts on the turn would be good, something like that. Uh, a pair and a king would be good, at least give us a pair, but... At this point, we've got absolutely nothing. But I stayed aggressive with this hand, even though we didn't have anything. So I was just kind of like going for it. And that's why I said, when you're going to play a hand and be aggressive, I mean, you got to stay with it. Checking the turn here, if I would have checked the turn, it would have been a dead giveaway. I had absolutely nothing. I continued to bet. Just with a pair of sixes, I continued to bet here. Now... Truth be told, we got extremely lucky on the river. I am not going to deny that fact. I mean, we went runner-runner here. But at the same time, I did not check the turn, so I was still representing, you know, a pretty big hand. Um, and if we didn't, if we got to the river here, honestly, 
Now check this out. Yeah, man, we spiked we spiked it right here. Um, just insanity. Uh, and you know, I went with a pretty big bet here because I figured, well, not a a huge bet, but a big enough bet that <clears throat> you know I was gonna make a play in this guy either way going to the river. You know, checking was probably never gonna be an option for me, but I went for a value bet here. Um, you just enough to get this guy to call. You know, obviously he was repping something pretty big here. He is going to make the call and we're going to get paid off. Um, but, uh, you know, I played the hand aggressive here. We got lucky on the runner runner cards and in that situation it worked out. But really what you got to understand is you don't want to be checking the turn. If you're going to play a hand aggressive, do not check the turn because it's a dead giveaway and you're basically just giving up your hand at that point. Um, but fortunately for us in that spot, I'm not going to lie. We got, we got real, real lucky with the runner runner right there. However, like I said, going to the river, I was probably going to make some kind of crazy play anyways. So, you know, and, uh, you know, feel free to comment below on that one. I kind of want to know your guys thoughts on it, but I thought it was pretty ridiculous myself. You know, I'll take it, I'll bake it. And, uh, you know, we continue moving on here. All right, that dude took it down with the Jack-10. All right, pocket queens. All right, pretty standard open raise. Kind of hoping for somebody to three bet me here. You know, build the pot up a little bit, go into the flop. I think player six called me and it was pretty it was just a bunch of low cards two six three so a pretty safe flop for pocket queens standard continuation bet here and did we get any action nope we didn't so yeah uh unfortunately not a lot there with queens turn card would have been a good one for us too to continue betting but sadly he did not have anything to continue with Okay, so I limped in with this hand, and I do say this quite a bit. You know, if you want to limp in with a hand, maybe like one out of 10 times, I think it's okay to do. And it's usually with your low pocket pairs. You know, this obviously isn't a low pocket pair, but, um, you know, your pocket deuces, threes, fours, fives, you know, your five, six suiteds, your six, seven suiteds. When you're in like first or second to act position wise, I do think it's okay to limp in every once in a while. Most of the time, you just want to be aggressive, but, you know, um, some of the hands I just mentioned can be a little bit tricky to play. Anyways, pretty good flop for nines. Got to figure someone might have a pair of uh, sevens or fives here, so they'll probably make a call to continue to the turn. be really nice if we hit a nine on the turn, though. Our turn was uh, was a queen, not really a scary card for us. Can't really put this guy on a queen. He's going to make the call, kind of put him on some kind of draw. I didn't really like seeing the four. I would have preferred maybe like a like a 10 or obviously a nine. But whatever, we still took it down and, uh, you know, nines worked out there. All right, then we had deuces. In another situation where we're first to act, it's deuces. You know, the problem with open raising first act with deuces is if you're getting three bet, you know, you're investing a lot of money in the hand with deuces and you're going to miss a lot of the time. I think to hit a set, it's something like 12 or 13 percent of a chance for that to actually happen. So, yeah, it's not going to happen too often. And plus, you're going to have the lowest one um, anyway. So that's what I decided to do. And not a good flop at all for deuces. This is kind of just like a check fold spot for us. I mean, yeah, King, and it, it got even worse on the turn. So, yep, just a uh, check fold here. Not going to bet into this at all. I just let player six have it. You know, even if he didn't 
I'm sorry. We we did call, uh, but he's going to put in a bet here on the river. Yeah, couldn't do it. Could not do it. He was basically representing the king or the ace. Didn't make sense to uh, continue. I mean, what were we really beating there anyways? All right. Next time we had Jax in a three-bet pot. Now, this one didn't get too high. I want to say it went up to maybe like $50 or $60. Slowed it down a little bit for you guys so we could uh, check it out. I think player one's going to boost it to 50. You could make the argument for me to four bet this, but, you know, um, I think calling's fine too. It just depends. Yeah, it went up to 43. I guess I could have four bet it to maybe like $80. But I'm just going to end up calling it. And, uh, you know, we're going to see a flop with it. Now, I don't remember exactly how this hand played out, so we're going to go over it. I want to say it was uh, like a 4 9 10 type of flop, something like that. I mean, clearly we're never folding here. Okay, so I'm just making the call. Yeah, so not a bad flop. Um, but kind of when I'm going to play cautious, just because I don't know what this guy has just yet. He could have a pocket pair. You know, he could have aces, king, queens. He could have pocket tens. He could also just have like an ace, king, or an ace, queen, something like that. So, uh, you know, we're just calling here. He kept it pretty small, too. And kind of that bet was saying to me, like, are you afraid of this flop or do you just not have anything? Okay, uh, turn card was an ace. That was like, the, you know, the, the worst card we could have imagined, honestly. Not sure how this guy was going to play it, but, um, you know, I couldn't fold. I, I wanted to see one more card, and what now I remember what happened here. We hit it on, okay, he didn't bet. We hit it on the river. Now, king, queen got there. King, king, I'm sorry, king, queen got there, and then you got your, uh, you know, your flushes, which he could have been betting, I guess, maybe. Um, but he could also just have a pair of aces here too. A lot of the time he bet pretty big. I just called and, uh, unfortunately for him, he turned over a uh, two pair, which was uh, pretty sick considering we had a Jack right there. Uh, you know, I really wish that th whatever, I, I, w I wish it would have just been like runner runner aces or something without the, uh, the flush card that would have been much better for us, but it is what it is. Okay, anyways, uh, just bringing it all home, though. Um, you know, like I said, we saw some interesting hands in this session. I played a lot over the weekend. Got a few other good sessions in as well. But hope you enjoyed these uh, five tips. You know, if you're not playing online poker right now, I think it's a great time to get in. The games are fairly easy to beat at mid-stakes, you know, whether you're playing $200 games, $500 games. Um, and there's money to be made here, guys. So, uh, you know, like I said, we'll have some of those resource links for getting started on Ignition below. Get on that newsletter. Thanks for watching this, guys, and we'll see you on the next poker video.